Hi there, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Emma. Thank you so much for choosing to practice with me. Um, you likely know if you take my classes often, I don't really like to chat or not that I don't like to chat. I don't like to fill you with a bunch of fluff before we get started. So let's just jump right into things on our back. Lie down, legs extending or bottoms of the feet together. And then let's bring both hands to the belly. We'll be starting our practice today with a three-part breath. So wherever you are in relation to your breath, let's exhale and empty the lungs completely. Bring your full focus to your breath as you draw a breath in one-third of the way. Kind of fill up the top of your lungs. Fill up your breath two-thirds of the way, kind of to your lower ribs. And then fill up your breath all the way to the bottom. Feel your low belly rise, and then take a big sigh, let that go. Again, slow breath in one third, two thirds, all the way full, and an audible sigh. Two more, just like that. Feeling a little bit more space at the bottom of every exhale. After that last one, go ahead and seal your lips. Active breathing, even in, even out through your nose. And you can focus a little bit more on your exhale breaths. The inhales will happen naturally. So focus more on pushing the breath out. Whereas when we did that three-part breath, our focus was on the inhales. Close your knees up like a book and then hug your knees into your chest. Circle your knees away from each other. And go the other way. And then pause with the knees hugged in. Keep your right leg in towards you. Extend your left leg all the way. Wiggle your right toes. Maybe point and flex your foot. Extend your right leg straight up. Clasp your hands behind your hamstring and flex your feet. Stamp your heel towards the ceiling and then your right leg's trying to go forward. So think right hip a little forward, flex your left foot, pull your belly button down towards your spine. Right peace sign finger to the big toe. Now if that doesn't work out, you can grab behind your calf or your ankle. If you've got the right big toe, think about pulling the shoulder back down towards the mat. Gentle tuck of your chin, feel the back of your neck lengthen. Try to pull that leg towards you while simultaneously trying to send that right hip a little bit forward for three, two, and one. Right leg all the way out to the right. Again, you can bend the knee here and place your hand on your inner knee or inner thigh or keep the big toe grip. If you've got the big toe grip, flex your foot, maybe look off to the left as a little bit of a counterbalance. I like the left hand to the top of the thigh or reaching out. Bring your right leg back up through center and all the way over to the left. You can keep your legs straight, grabbing the outside edge of the foot or bend the knee, left hand to the knee. Look off to the right. Imagine your right hip going forward and your left hip pulling back towards you. So you're still trying to lengthen your right side body, expand across your chest, big inhale. And exhale. Unwind onto your back into a figure four. Right ankle over left thigh. I like to thread the arms through, grab the back of the hamstring or the front of the shin. Pull in towards you, think right hip or uh, right knee a little forward. Breathe into your upper back, middle back, lower back. and release that. Left leg extend, right leg extend, big stretch. Hug your left knee into your chest, roll out your ankle, wiggle your toes, maybe point and flex your foot. Extend your left leg straight up, clasp your hands behind your hamstring. Flex your feet, 
Right inner thigh spirals down, heel stamp forward. Then your left piece hind fingers will grab your big toe or you can place your hands behind your calf or ankle. If you've got the big toe especially, plug your left shoulder down, left hip going forward. Try to lengthen your left side, gentle tuck of your chin, and then left leg out to the left. The leg can be straight or bent, right hand on top of the thigh or reaching out. Breathing into your left inner thigh, keep flexing your foot, and almost like you're trying to lift the heel up a little bit and the toes are turning down towards the mat. So really externally rotating that left thigh bone. Bring your left leg back up through center and grab the outer edge of the foot or the knee and twist. Left leg across the body, left hip going forward. So it's easy to crunch into that left side body. Imagine someone's trying to tug your left hip forward One more breath. Unwind onto your back for figure four. Left ankle over right thigh. You might pull your legs in towards you. Grab behind your hamstring or in front of your shin. Flex your left toes. Think left knee going forward for three. Two. And one. Release that grip. Everything extend. Big stretch. Hug your knees in, rock up and down your spine about three times. One, two, and standing forward fold. Use some momentum, lift your hips up, bend your knees generously. You can let your arms hang heavy, or maybe walk your hands a bit to the right, to the left a few times. Feel free to grab your elbows and gently sway a bit side to side. If you're rounding your back a lot, try to bend your knees more. Let your head hang heavy. Like your head is a bowling ball. Less tension in your neck. If you've got your elbows, switch that. Which arm's on top? Focus more on pushing the breath out, finding the bottom of your exhales. The inhales, let those happen naturally. Release your arms, walk your hands to the right as you bend your right knee and lengthen your left side. Think about lifting the arch of your left foot, then walk your hands all the way to the left. Bend your left knee. Imagine lifting the arch of your right foot. Back through center. Let's go toes out towards a yogi squat. Drop your seat down, use your elbows to press your knees out. Waistline in, press your low back in. Heavier heels, lighter toes, feel a gentle lift through the back of your skull. Gaze forward for three, two. Hands down, take a big step back with just your left foot to a crooked monkey. Drop your left knee down. You can keep both hands on the mat or place your right hand on your right thigh. Melt your hips forward. Press the big toe mound of your right foot down. Great, big inhale and exhale. Right hand down, step your right knee back to meet your left knee. On your inhale, arch your back, look up at the ceiling. On your exhale, round your spine. Again, inhale, arch back, cow pose. Exhale, round it out for cat. Take a few rounds here on your own. Gentle contraction, back of your throat, ujjayi breath. One more. Meet back, neutral spine, tuck your toes, press back towards a bear pose. Smash your belly to your thighs, lift your hips up. Spread your fingers out. I would like to walk my hands forward just a little bit from here, knowing where we're going. So I'm going to walk my hands a little bit forward. Then I'm going to lift my, keep my heels lifted and straighten my legs. So I'm in a down dog with my heels up. 
Roll your weight all the way forward so your shoulders are over your wrists. If you need to further adjust your hands, go for it. Then press back again towards bare pose. Straighten your legs, heels stay lifted, roll forward, high plank. Few times go through that. So bare pose to down dog with the heels up and roll forward to plank. You should start to feel some movement in your spine, kind of like a wave rolling forward and back. Next time you're in bear pose, pause for three, two, and one. Knees down, walk your hands forward, puppy pose. You might like to grab the front of the mat and imagine pulling it forward. If you don't feel enough sensation, chin to the mat, melt your heart space down. Inner shoulders down your back, outer hips lift, thigh bones press back. Slide all the way forward onto your belly. Slide your hands back under your shoulders and roll up to a cobra pose. You might like to wiggle around a little bit right and left. And then when you're ready, take it back to downward facing dog. Bring your feet out nice and wide, about the width of your mat. Walk your hands back a little bit with your thumbs touching. Take your left hand and grab your right ankle. Pull your torso through towards the right. Imagine your right palm sliding a piece of paper forward. Actively press, firm your legs, and bump your hips slightly to the left. And switch. Right hand, left ankle, hips swing a little right. Imagine pulling your torso through to the left for three. Relax your neck, two. One, right thumb meets left thumb. Step left foot outside left pinky finger. Turn your toes out and drop your right knee for crooked monkey on the other side. Both hands can stay on the mat or left hand to the left thigh. Press the big toe mound of your foot down. Melt your hips forward for three. two, and one. Left hand down, tuck your back toes, step your right foot outside your right pinky finger, yogi squat again. Elbows press your knees out, tailbone drop, squeeze your glute muscles together, feel your mula bandha, your pelvic floor lift, belly button back, hands down, toes forward and fold. Slowly ragdoll yourself all the way up to standing, one vertebrae at a time. Eventually, once you get there, roll your shoulders back and down a few times. Walk your feet together so the big toes touch, arms by your side, samastitihi. On your next inhale, reach your arms up, look up, urdhva hastasana, exhale, forward fold, uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift, ardha. Exhale, hands to the floor. Step back, right foot, left foot, chaturanga, dandasana. Knees can be up or down. Inhale, urdhva mukha, upward facing or cobra pose. Exhale, adho mukha, svanasana, downward facing dog. Knees can be bent slightly, heels turned out slightly. Thigh bones back, outer hips lift. Relax your neck, spread your fingers. I like the pointer finger pointing forward, the other three fingers splayed a little bit out to the sides. I find this provides less pressure in my wrists. Grip a little bit with the pads of the fingers. Pull your ribs in towards each other. Breathe in and out through your nose. Lift your heels and look forward. Step with your right foot and your left foot to the front. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. Look up at your hands. Hands to your heart and hands by your side. Again, inhale, arms up, maybe lean back. Exhale, fold, empty. Halfway lift. Palms down, left foot, right foot. Step back, chaturanga. Inhale up. Exhale, down dog. Gentle contraction, back of your throat. You should be able to hear your breath like an ocean wave. Try to breathe all the way into the top and the bottom of the breath. 
So like we did in that three part breath in the beginning when you were all the way full and all the way empty. Heels up, look forward. Step left foot, right foot to the front. Lengthen, fold. Rise on your inhale all the way up. Hands to your heart and by your side. Last time, arms up, forward fold. Halfway lift, step or jump back, vinyasa. Follow your inhales and your exhales with the pace of your breath. Notice if there's tension in your jaw or in your face. See if you can release or soften a little bit of that with every exhale. Your gaze and down dog should be at your feet or up towards your navel, wherever you feel less pressure on your neck. Lift your heels, look forward, step or jump to the front. Lengthen, inhale, fold, exhale. Rise all the way up, reach your arms, hands to your heart, and down by your side. Bend your knees, Utkatasana, both arms up, and twist off to the right. Knees a little left, sit nice and low. Heavier heels, lighter toes, and then prayer twist. Left elbow hooks outside right knee, press your right palm down into your left palm. Weight back into your heels, sink your butt a little bit lower, and forward fold. Grab a wrist behind your calves or just grab your ankles. Bend your knees again, Utkatasana, inhale. Exhale, twist off to your left. Knees a little right, you wanna feel the twist from your waist. So squeezing your belly, squeezing your midline, prayer twist. Hook your right elbow outside, you're already halfway there. Press your left palm down into your right palm, try to stack your elbows. Pull your sternum towards your thumbs for three, two, forward fold. Grab opposite wrist behind your ankles or just grab your ankles. Feel your weight roll forward as you squeeze your legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands to the floor, step or jump back, vinyasa. Keeping your hips square, lift your right leg up behind you. Exhale, step your right foot forward. Wiggle your left foot a little to the left and come up to a crescent warrior. Outer hips squeeze in, feel your hip points lift slightly. Firm up your belly, inhale. Exhale, sweep your arms back and hover your chest. Just gently tuck your chin in towards your throat and then shift forward to warrior three. Your arms can stay back or you can bring your hands to heart center. Feel your left hip drop and your right hip pull back, inhale. Exhale, Shiva squat, left knee to your right calf. Hug your left heel up towards your butt. Rise to one leg, Tadasana, left knee up in front of you, extend your arms up. Plug your shoulders down, scoop your tailbone underneath you. Flex your left foot, inhale. Exhale, twist to the left. Let's go wide arms so you're not even grabbing your knee. But think about your right hip lifting a little bit, straightening into your right leg. Take a nice big step back with your left foot. Find a warrior two. Line your right heel up with your left arch. On your inhale, reverse warrior. On your exhale, hands to the floor, twisting. Left hand down, right arm reach up. Stack your shoulders, look up at your right hand. Drop your back knee. Right hand to the back of your left thigh, reach your left arm up. If that's too much, take your right hand to your waist. Plug your left shoulder back down into the socket. Inhale. Exhale, both hands to the floor. Step back, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Keeping your hips square, lift your left leg up. Exhale, step your left foot forward. Wiggle your right foot a little to the right and come up to a crescent warrior. Outer hips squeeze in, firm up your back leg. Inhale, exhale your arms back, hover your chest. Shoulder blades draw together, then shift forward, warrior three. Outer right hip drop, left hip pull back, inhale. 
Exhale, Shiva squat. Right knee to your left calf. Load the weight in your left leg. Rise up to one leg. Mountain pose, right knee in front of you. Flex your right toes and then even out the hips here. So feel your right hip drop, your left hip lift. Inhale. Keep that as you twist off to the right. Wide arms. Big step back, warrior two. Line your left heel up with your right arch. Flip your left palm, reverse warrior. On your exhale, windmill down, right hand to the mat, roll onto your right toes. Stack your shoulders, pay attention to your hips. Sink your left hip a bit and puff up your left leg, or right leg. Left hand either to your waist or back of your right thigh. Drop your right knee and reach your right arm up. Feel your hip points lift a little, belly firm, inhale. Exhale, hands to the floor, step back, chaturanga. Exhale back to downward facing dog. All right, how it's gonna work today is we're kinda gonna add on to that, mostly to the end, but a few poses in the middle as well. Inhale, lift your right leg up. Exhale, step your right foot forward. Crescent warrior, adjust your feet, reach your arms up. Exhale, sweep your arms back. Inhale, warrior three, anything you want with the arms. Exhale, Shiva squat. Inhale, one leg mountain pose, left knee in front of you. Exhale, wide arm twist to the left. Now we're gonna go half moon pose. So dive your right hand down, you keep your arms out nice and wide, send your left leg back and your hips are open. You might grab a block or float your fingers. Flex your left foot and pull your ribs in. Squeeze your upper right thigh, then take a big step back to warrior two. Line your right heel up with your left arch. Straighten your legs this time, reverse triangle. Imagine high-fiving the space behind you. On your exhale, side angle. Bring your elbow to your thigh, extend your left arm up and over, or just reach it straight up. Sink your hips a little bit, press the outside edge of your left foot down. Keep your legs bent, reverse warrior, reach up and back. Exhale, windmill down for that twist. Left hand inside the foot, right arm reach up. Stack your shoulders, drop your back knee, right hand to your waist or back of your thigh, curl back. Exhale, hands to the floor, vinyasa. We'll meet in the downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg lift. Exhale, step forward, crescent warrior. Inhale, adjust your feet, sweep your arms back. Warrior three, and Shiva squat. Come up, one leg Tadasana, and twist to your right. Half moon pose, you keep the expansion through your arms, send your right leg back and your left hand will either float off the mat or grab a block. Flex your right foot, pull your belly button back, and take a nice big step back to warrior two. This time, straighten your legs, reverse triangle. Exhale, side angle. Try to do the same thing you did with the arms on the other side. Scoop your left glute underneath your right. Keep your legs bent, reverse warrior. And exhale, down for that twist. Right hand inside, stack your shoulders, and look up. Drop your back knee, left hand either to the waist or back of your thigh, curl it back. Exhale, hands to the floor, vinyasa. All right. Again, adding on, right leg lift. Exhale, step. Crescent warrior, inhale. Arms back, exhale. Warrior three, inhale. Shiva squat, exhale. One leg mountain pose, inhale. Twist, wide arms to the left, exhale. Slowly take it all the way down, half moon pose. That's actually your inhale. Exhale, step back, warrior two. Straight legs, reverse triangle. Exhale, side angle. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, windmill down for a twist. Drop your back knee, 
Right hand, hip or back of thigh, reach up. And prayer twist off to the right. Right hand, press down into left hand. Your back toes can tuck and lift your knee up, or you can keep your left knee on the mat. Think sternum towards your thumbs, stack your elbows. Right hip sink, puff up your left leg for three. Two. And one, look down, revolve half moon. Left hand bump forward, lift your left leg up behind you. I like to reach the right arm up, but you might like to start with your right hand at the waist or at the low back. Your left foot is flexed. Outer left hip drop for three, two, one. Look down, step your feet hip width apart. So left foot meets right, hip width. Take your peace sign fingers and grab your big toes, lengthen and fold. Elbows go out, maybe a little bit back, Padang Gushtasana. Firm up your legs and roll your weight forward. Again, head heavy like a bowling ball for three. Two. And one. Release that halfway lift. Fold, walk your feet in so the big toes touch. Bend your knees, Utkatasana. And then lift your right leg up, cross your ankle over your thigh for figure four. I like to bring the hands to heart center. You could also place right hand on right knee, left hand on right foot. Three. Two. Left hand to your waist, right piece and finger, grab your big toe or your knee. Take your leg all the way out to the right. If you notice you're bending your legs or dumping over to the left, grab your knee instead. Flex your right toes so they almost point back. If that's going well, look off to your left for three. Tailbone scoop towards left heel, two. Right leg through center, one. Switch the grip, left hand grab the outside of the foot, reach your right arm back. Expand your chest. Kick your right foot a little bit out to the right for three. Two. Release the grip, but keep the twist and take a big step back, warrior two. Warrior two on that left side, and let's shift it all the way to the back of the mat, Skandasana. Big bend in your right knee, flex your left toes. Feel free to use your hands or a block. Right hip bumping, left hip a little to the left. Try to tuck your tailbone and sit up a little taller. Left toes flex, so the inner thigh lifts. Squeeze your left thigh muscle, three. Two. And one, pivot towards the back of your mat. Walk your right foot out to the right, lizard pose. Both hands down inside the foot. Puff up your left leg, so feel the back of the knee lift. Now our next pose here is gonna be side plank on the left. Left hand stays. Maybe, just like we did standing, right peace sign fingers, grab your right big toe, Vashisthasana, with the big toe grab, or tree pose variation. Hips up. Stay in side plank or flip it over, wild thing, for five. Your left leg nice and straight, strong, pushing, four. Look at either hand, three two, and one, right hand down, pigeon pose. Slide your right knee up behind your wrist, left leg long behind you. Take an inhale, and then exhale, you can stay upright or fold it forward. Observing your breath, still focusing on those exhales. Can you still feel the top and bottom of every single breath here? Slowly walk your hands back underneath your shoulders. Slide your right knee more towards the center of your mat. Slide your left knee up behind your right knee. Kick your feet away from each other. Go Mukhasana with the right leg on top. 
You're trying to stack your knees and get both sitting bones on the mat. For me, my knees don't stack exactly, so focus more on how the pose feels, less on how it looks. You wanna feel a stretch in your outer hips. I like to grab the feet, or you could choose to walk your hands forward for five. Four. Do your best to sink that right hip. Three. Two. And one, walk your hands back. If they're not, place your right foot outside of your left knee. So you're halfway there and twist off to your right. Left elbow hooks outside, look over your right shoulder. Press the big toe mound of your right foot down and keep sinking your right hip towards the floor. Stay there or left hand can grab the outside edge of your right foot, extend your right leg and reach your right arm back. So kind of like what we did uh, standing this is now our seated twist. Requires a little bit less uh, balance. Still requires the flexibility. Right hand down if it's not already. Left foot back, or right foot back onto the mat. Take a counter stretch off to the left, little dip. Place your hands off the mat. Then keep going over to the left until you're in tabletop facing forward. From there, Slide all the way forward onto your belly into a sphinx pose. You might need to adjust your hands, pull your chest up, kind of like you're diving yourself through and exhale back to downward facing dog. Let's go ahead and do all of that on the left side. Lift your left leg up, exhale, step your left foot forward. Come up crescent warrior, inhale. Sweep your arms back, exhale. Warrior three, inhale. Shiva squat, exhale. One leg mountain pose, right leg up. Wide arm twist off to the right. Half moon pose, left hand diving down, take it slow, this is actually your inhale. Exhale, step back, warrior two. Straight legs, reverse triangle. Exhale, side angle, re-bend your left knee. Keep it bent as you reverse warrior. Exhale, windmill down, right hand inside your foot. Stack your shoulders, look up. Drop your back knee, left hand to your waist or back of your thigh, curl it back, inhale. Exhale, prayer twist off to the left. Right elbow hooks outside, press left palm down into right palm. Stay there or tuck your back toes, pay attention to your hips. It's easy for the hips to become uneven here. So think left hip back and down, right hip lift and forward, three. Let's grip with your toes, two. One, look forward, right hand bump forward and right leg lift, revolve, half moon. Torso twisting, squeezing, left hip pulling back. Flex your right foot so the toes point down. Look down, left hand down. Right foot meets left foot hip width. Slide your hands underneath your feet, Pada Hastasana. Inhale, lengthen and exhale, fold. Imagine trying to pull the hands out from underneath the feet. Roll your weight a little forward. Shoulders away from ears, make some space in your upper back for three. Two. One. Release that, walk your feet together and bend your knees, Utkatasana, chair pose. Figure four, cross your left ankle over your right thigh. I like hands heart or left hand to left knee, right hand to left foot. Sink your butt back, tuck your pelvis slightly. Then bring your right hand to your waist, your left piece and fingers will either grab your big toe or your knee. Come up to stand on your right leg and take your left leg all the way out to the left. Flex your left toes back, so you wanna feel that external rotation. Stand up nice and tall. If that's going well, look off to the right. Squeeze your left oblique, sink your left hip slightly for three, two, and one. Left leg through center and switch. Right hand grab the foot, left arm reach back, or the right hand can grab the knee. Either way, focus on your left hip sinking, standing up a little bit taller for three, Pushing the breath out, two. 
One, keep the twist, but release your grip. Take a nice big step back to warrior two. Warrior two on the right side. And then take it all the way to the back of the mat, Skandasana. Big bend in your left knee, flex your right toes. Left hip bumping, right hip a little bit towards the front of your mat. Maybe hips lift slightly. Tailbone scoop, low belly pulls in, back of your skull lift. Pivot towards the back of your mat, lizard pose, both hands down inside the foot. Hug left knee in towards the shoulder. All right, we're really just using lizard as a transition to get into our side plank on the right. Roll to the outside edge of your right foot. You can take your peace sign fingers and grab your left big toe or take tree pose variation. Scoop your right glute underneath. You can stay in your side plank or gently, without stomping your foot down, release and flip it into a wild thing. Your right leg straight, pushing the front of the mat forward for three, two, one. Flip that around for pigeon pose. Slide your left knee up behind your wrist. Take an inhale and an exhale to either stay there or fold in. Always feel free to use props. I didn't mention that in the beginning, but you're always welcome to use props in my class, however you see fit. Sometimes I give you options for them, uh, but a lot of times it's used at your own discretion. So I, I love blocks, especially in a lot of the balancing poses like uh, revolved half moon, even half moon pose, really helpful to kind of bring the floor up to you. Start to walk your hands back under your shoulders. Slide your left knee more towards the center of your mat and then slide your right knee up behind your left knee. Kick your feet away from each other and drop your seat back for Gomukhasana with the left leg on top, cow face pose. You can grab your feet or walk your hands forward. Don't be surprised if one side's a lot easier or a lot more challenging than the other. That is just the way the cookie crumbles as we say it here in the US. That means that's just the way it is. I don't really know why that's a saying, but it is. <laughs> Last two. And one, walk your hands back towards you. Place your left foot outside of your right knee. It's already pretty close and twist off to the left. Right elbow can hook outside. Try to press the big toe mound of your left foot down and keep sinking your left hip. Now you can either stay there or your right hand can grab the outer edge of your left foot and you can twist. I like the left arm reaching back. So here you can get the action you would need in that standing pose with a little bit more stability, less risk of falling out. Try to look back at your left hand for three. Low back in two. One left hand down if it's not. Place your left foot back outside of your right knee. Counter stretch off to the right, little dip down, push up like and keep going to the right. We'll find our tabletop. Cross your ankles and take a seat back. Extend your legs forward. So you're facing the front of your mat, legs extending. Move your butt back. Sitting bones heavy, inhale, exhale, forward fold. Inhale for length, exhale. Don't need to make this super, super active. Let's actually make this one pretty passive. So a little bit less effort, nice and gentle. And then walk your hands back up towards you. Bend your knees for bench pose or reverse table. Hands behind you, lift your hips up, hip points to the sky, firm up your glutes. Three, two, one, lower your hips down and lie all the way down onto your back. Place your feet on the mat for bridge pose. Arms by your side, scoop your tailbone and lift your hips up. And we'll do two back bends today, bridge pose first, and then if you want a second bridge pose or something else. Imagine squeezing a block or a balloon between your knees. We'll be here for three. Two. And one, lower your hips down, take a breath. 
Back bend number two, bridge or upward facing bow. Tailbone scoop, lift your hips up, stay there or hands beside your head. Fingers point towards your shoulders. As you press down, you might first come to the top of your head, so your gaze is back at the back of your mat, and then press into your hands to lift your torso up. Toes point forward, you should feel a little heaviness through the big toe mound of your foot. Definitely don't point your toes out. You wanna protect your knees. You kind of feel your inner thighs hug in for three. Two. Last breath. Slowly bring it all the way down and hug your knees into your chest. Rock a little bit side to side. Extend your legs up, waterfall. Shoulder stand with a block or shoulder stand with your hands. If you're using your hands, support your low back. Use more of your palms, less of your fingers. Your gaze stays up at your feet. Squeeze your core, your glutes, your inner thighs. If you're in, legs up the wall, waterfall, or shoulder stand with a block, stay there. Otherwise, you might like to extend your legs overhead for plow pose. You can keep your hands at your low back. Personally, I like to grab the outside edges of the mat or you can bind your hands. But for me, I'm, I'm a little bit hypermobile in the elbows. So as you'll see, I bind my hands, my elbows actually lift up off the mat. I'd actually prefer if you bend your elbows and keep your triceps, your elbows on the mat, even if that means that your hands don't reach the mat. So that's kind of why I like to grab the outside edges of the mat a little bit more. Stay there or bend your knees for ear pressure pose. Press the back of your skull down and your shoulders. Less pressure in your actual neck. Three, two, last breath. Slowly start to lower yourself down. Let's go fingers under the butt, Matsyasana fish pose. Forearms on the mat, back is off the mat, drop your head back. You might like to take a lion's breath in through the nose. Tongue out, exhale. Tuck your chin in towards your chest and slowly lower all the way down. Now you might like to grab a happy baby or a supine twist here. Something that will close out your practice if you feel any tension left over. Anywhere in your body that needs a little extra love or extra stretch, feel free to go there now. Then if and when you're ready, start to extend your legs towards the front corners of your mat. You could bring both hands to the belly, just like how we started. You could bring one hand to the belly, one to the heart, or sprawl your arms. I think the hands to the belly kind of provides another thing to think about. So in Shavasana, we release the breath control. So your breath is natural, not forced. So you're still observing the breath, but you're not needing to put the effort behind it. So that kind of takes away one thing to think about. And so the mind easily starts to wonder for a lot of people in Shavasana or in stillness in general. So putting your hands on your belly can kind of give you another thing to think about. So even though you're not controlling the breath, this is just another way you can feel the breath. It can give the mind something to focus on, like an anchor, an anchor into the present moment, noticing each breath. We'll be here for a little while. Take rest and enjoy your Shavasana.
If you have a few more moments to stay and rest, I really encourage you to do so. Yeah. If you're ready to start moving, move your breath around. You might wiggle your fingers, your toes. When you're ready, stretch your arms overhead, point toes, lengthen, hug your knees in and roll to your right or left side. Gradually make your way up to a comfortable seat. Again, observing your breath and really feeling the bottom of your exhale. Feel the emptiness, the lack of clutter, a little bit lighter, clearer. And you have the potential to fill that space with whatever it is you need today. So you kind of cleared things out to make space for something new. Bring your hands to heart center, take a big breath in, and a big sigh. Thank you for sharing your energy and your practice and for choosing to practice with me. Namaste. Thank you, YouTube yogis. I so appreciate you choosing my channel when I know there's so many out there to choose from. If you liked this class, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you liked in the comments. Hit the subscribe button, of course, if you haven't. And let me know if you have any questions or if there's something you'd really like to see in class. I will see you back next week.